Hey everybody, welcome to our sixth lesson on conic sections and today we're going to begin to discuss the ellipse. So we learned in our first lesson that there are three basic types of conic sections, the ellipse, the parabola, and the hyperbola. We have just completed a bunch of lessons discussing the parabola and now we're going to discuss the ellipse. So a circle is a special type of ellipse and we're going to start the discussion there because circles are simpler than ellipses. Circles are sets of points equidistant from a given point. So the picture that you see there is the circle with a center HK and a radius of R uh, and all points XY to HK uh, are going to be the same distance. So the distance from XY to HK is constant and we can use the distance formula to set that up as an equation. The distance from uh, given by the square root of X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared is equal to R. Then you square both sides and you get the formula for a circle. So the circle is the set of all points that obey this formula. And if you don't know the distance formula, um, I'm gonna put a link in the description of an earlier lesson where we discussed the distance formula. There's a special type of circle that is very useful in mathematics called the unit circle. The unit circle is the unique circle with center zero, zero and radius one. And it's called the unit circle because uni means one, like in the word universe. So here's a picture of the circle we just derived, and the unit circle is just the same circle, but instead of a radius of r, you have a radius of 1, and instead of the center being hk, you have the center being 0, 0. So we can plug those values into the formula and simplify to get x squared plus y squared equals 1 is the uh, formula for the unit circle. And the question is, how do we get an ellipse from this? And in order to discuss that, we have to bring back the idea of transformations. This is the angle that we're going to view this through for now. So we learned in a previous lessons that replacing x with x minus h in a formula leads you to shift the graph h units to the right, and replacing y with y minus k leads it to shifting the graph to k units up. And uh, replacing x with y and y with x causes it to be flipped across the line, reflected across the line y is equal to x. That often turns things from horizontal to vertical. And we're going to learn about a new type of transformation, and here's our first task. On Desmos, graph the unit circle, x squared plus y squared is equal to 1, and replace x with ax, and let a be a slider. How does this affect the graph for different values of a? And similarly, replace y with by, how does that affect the graph? Try it out. When we replace x with ax, the graph gets compressed, or is shrunk, with respect to the y-axis, that is, whenever a is greater than 1 and every point is going to be a times closer to the y-axis. So here's the animation of it. Um, as a gets bigger, it gets closer and closer to the y-axis. It gets compressed inward. And the reason for this is that since x is being multiplied by a number, each x value on the graph has to be smaller so that the y remains the same. It's a compensatory effect just like the other substitution transformations we have seen. And when, X, when A is between 0 and 1, the graph becomes expanded or stretched with respect to the y-axis. And every point becomes 1 over A times further away from the y-axis. So here's the animation here. As A gets smaller and smaller, it actually gets further and further apart. And it's the reciprocal of A that determines how much further apart it is. For example, if A is equal to 1 half, every point becomes twice as far away from the y-axis. and Replacing y with by does the exact same things, just in the vertical dimension instead of the horizontal dimension. The summary of all these scalings uh, is on the screen right now, and I tried to include these um, axes plus arrows to show what each of them uh, does. So replacing x with ax compresses by a factor of a with respect to the y-axis. Replacing x with 1 over ax stretches it with respect to the y-axis, and similarly replacing y with by compresses with respect to the x-axis, and replacing y with 1 over b, y stretches by a factor of b with regard to the x-axis. Task 2. So the red circle is the unit circle, given by the equation x squared plus y squared is equal to 1, as you now know. Using these ideas of stretching and shrinking, can you find an equation for the purple shape, which is an ellipse? Try it out. We begin by noting what is happening to the red circle in order to make it into the purple ellipse. The red circle is compressed horizontally by a factor of 2 and stretched vertically by a factor of 3. In other words, the width of the purple ellipse 
is going to be twice as small as the red unit circle and the height is going to be three times as tall so therefore we're going to replace x by 2x compressing it horizontally and y with one third y stretching it vertically and so this is the unit circle and we just do the um, replacements we substitute and that's going to be the equation for the ellipse now there are different representations of this equation that could be useful for example if we wanted to we could square both of the terms we can also put everything in the denominator if we would want to and even although you might not see why we're doing this yet we can put squared things in the denominators and in fact the squared things are the stretch factors horizontally and vertically so by looking at that last form, we can quickly say that the um, horizontal dimension is going to be one half uh, of the unit circle, and the uh, vertical dimension is going to be three times that of the unit circle. So we can imagine every ellipse as a transformed unit circle, where we're taking the radius of one horizontally and multiplying it by a, and the radius of one uh, vertically and multiplying by, by b to get the vertical radius, so to speak, of the uh, ellipse. Now there are more specialized vocabulary for the ellipse, but we're not going to introduce it right now. So we start with the unit circle, x squared plus y squared is equal to 1, and to stretch it by a horizontally and b vertically, we replace x with 1 over ax, and replace y with 1 over by. And then we can just square them and rewrite it slightly and simplify to get the equation for an ellipse that has a center of 0, 0. And if this ellipse has a center of 0, 0, in order to make it become an ellipse with an arbitrary center, all we need to do is shift it. So the center of hk, you replace x with x minus h and y with y minus k to get the equation of an ellipse in general, x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared is equal to 1. Now our last task is can you find the equation for the ellipse that is on the screen? Once again, please try it out. So we need to find out information about this ellipse, namely the uh, center and the vertical and horizontal dimensions. How much are they expanded from that of the unit circle that is with a radius of one in either direction? So it's stretched horizontally by a factor of 5 and stretched vertically by a factor of 2 and this allows us to say that a is 5 and b is 2 and h is 2 and k is 4 because that's simply the center that we're shifting it by um, in comparison to what it would be if the center were that the, at 0 0 so all we need to do is plug it in we can plug in uh, the 2 4 5 and 2 so to speak into the right spots and we have an equation uh, of an ellipse okay and we could expand it if we wanted to and write the 25 and 4 there directly so this is one way of looking at an ellipse that we've learned today um, which is it's a, simply just a stretched or compressed circle and there are other ways of looking at ellipses um, in terms of uh, focal points and in terms of focus directrix that we're going to discuss next time but i think this is the most intuitive way of thinking of it so that's why we did this one first until then have a great day